So we've now had the chance to explore the world of the Jail of Mist, and I thought I would take this opportunity to explore the lore of this game in the network test. I will mainly be talking about the surrounding lore of the setting and the world, as we have not gone far enough into the story to see our main character's plot. Please bear in mind that this is based on the network test and so the game has not been fully explored and is subject to change. With that being said, let's get into the lore. We are a Revenant, a human brought back to life. A fellow Revenant in our prison at the beginning of the game describes this in layman's terms. A human that died but got kicked awake again. That's what you are. A Revenant. As long as your heart is intact, you'll keep coming back. But you have to drink blood and you'll become one of the lost. The loading screen can elaborate on this a little bit more, saying, Revenants were created by implanting an engineered BOR parasite into the heart of a human corpse. By holding the parasite's evasion at bay, hosts were able to maintain their own volition, but revival could take years, depending on the individual. So at one point, Revenants were deceased people, but what are these BOR parasites that give life to the Revenants? Again, we can turn to the loading screen for further explanation. An abbreviation of Biological Organ Regenerative Parasite it attaches itself to the heart of a creature that has lost vital functions and sends its own blood into the host allowing it to regulate and control all organs, including the brain. And a further loading screen reveals something about BOR Parasite's discovery. Before the Great Collapse, dead creatures were discovered that miraculously would come back to life, and eventually turned cannibal in the process called zombification. Research into the phenomenon found that an unidentified life form had attached to the creature's hearts and taken control of every cell in their host's body. So patching these pieces of lore together, we can get that the boar creatures normally completely took control of their host, and the behaviour that we see described in the latter piece of lore that I read out seems to describe the behaviour of the creatures we know as the lost. It also explains why revenants only truly die if their heart is destroyed, as BOR parasites attach to the host's heart and is the source of their powers. Thus the undying revenants were born with these experimentations, and our sophisticated revenant buddy gives us some more exposition as to why these creatures were made. It's ironic. Creatures made to fight the horrors of the Great Collapse now have to fight their own fallen kin. So there was an event which humanity faced called the Great Collapse, and we can presume that this event was cataclysmic enough to force humanity to create the Revenants, using the parasites that they had discovered before the Collapse. Revenants essentially act as vampires, needing blood to sustain themselves and their sanity. If they do not control their bloodlust by feeding, they will become one of the Lost, the main enemy types in the game. The Lost are those Revenants who have become bestial and care only about satiating their bloodlust. In time, these beings will become extremely monstrous, as we can see in the second stage of Oliver's fight. From the dialogues of the sophisticated Revenant, we can infer that the humans were scarce after the devastations of the Great Collapse, as he says, but humans are scarce after the Great Collapse and all. It's also told to us that humans were hunted after the Great Collapse for their blood by the Revenants. As a loading screen which talks about Cerberus soldiers, the authorities of this society, reads as follows. They effectively began the restoration of order and all but ended the hunting of humans for blood and wars between revenants. So with blood being scarce, a number of issues would hit the fledgling revenant society, including a figure known as Queen. I don't know why such a lucky thing came along, but they started appearing after the Queen frenzied and was taken down. The view never improves, does it? They came back home after the war against the Queen and found this mist. So a powerful figure known as the Queen became frenzied and then was defeated and this event would shape and create the society we know as the Jail of Mist. The Red Mist showed up a short time after the Queen was defeated. And when it did, it trapped everyone and everything inside. 
giving birth to the Society of Revenants ruled by Silva. The Jail of the Mists. As time passed, that was the name people gave to the world inside. The creatures trapped inside the miasma wander in a never-ending cycle of death and rebirth, always searching for blood beads to sustain them. We still see hints of the Queen's presence in the world. For example, there's the monstrous Queen's Knight, a very vampiric enemy, and its monstrous appearance gives us a good example or good illustration of the frenzied forces of the Queen. There is reason to believe that the Queen was a engineering project that was created to help the problems of the Revenants. For the sophisticated Revenant refers to a Project Queen. I would suggest that this project was an attempt to engineer a solution to the issues facing blood shortages. For it is the Queen's blood that spawns the blood beads. There is also an item you can find called Pure Blood, which seems to be a medicinal blood that can heal Revenants. The Queen's Iron and Queen's Steel also suggest that the Queen Project, or The Queen, was responsible in helping build this material as well. Evidently, this project backfired and would end in the Queen Wars. Yet there was other successes of the Queen Project. Alongside the Bloodbead fonts were the Missile, a purifying force, and again this suggests that the Queen was initially a bioengineering project meant to save Revenant society. One final interesting thing about the Queen's blood is that according to the sophisticated Revenant, only the medicine made from the Queen's blood can heal Withered Missile, yet we can restore them, and it is our blood that rejuvenates the blood bead fonts and gives blood beads. At this stage, it is clear that there is some link between the player character and the Queen, a connection of blood. We know from the Queen Slayer Claw and other blood veils that there was a military and offensive force launched against the Queen, known as Operation Queenslayer. The end of this war would set up the current society and the world that we experience in Code Vein, as it would mark the beginning of the Miasma, the lost and a struggling Revenant society. The mysterious Red Miasma is dangerous for Revenants to breathe, hence the constant need for our respirator apparatus. The effect of this gas upon the Revenants is to push them closer to the beings known as the Lost by speeding up the bloodthirst. The Lost are those Revenants who have given in to their primal bloodlust urges and lost their minds, as would always have been the danger using BOR parasites. We can in fact see this happen in game to the tragic Oliver, whose mask gets damaged causing him to breathe in the miasma and then become a Lost, and there is no coming back once one is lost. We can see why this society was called the Jail of Mists. The Revenant society here is literally imprisoned by the Miasma, for none dare to pass it, according to the depressed Revenant in the cell. It was over this fractured society that a figure known as Silva would come to rule and would begin to restore order by ending the infighting between Revenants. This new rule would be enforced by a police force known as Cerberus. Cerberus would collect levies from the populace, levies of blood beads, and distribute these amongst the population according to the loading screen. And indeed, in Oliver's memory, we can see them coming to collect the blood bead levy from him. Now, whilst on the surface this seems to be a good thing, it has ultimately left some wandering revenants that have become desperate, who now enslave other revenants to force them to collect blood bleeds on their behalf. This is the world in which we find ourselves. We are told that we are special in an out-of-body experience right at the beginning of the network test in a conversation with a being known as Cruz. We are told that we are a special blood type. Revenant have special blood types that define their powers and for some reason ours is broken and it means that we can absorb any blood type. Later, our friend Louis will describe this blood type as a void type those who very rare revenants who can use any other's blood types. These blood types determine what role a revenant plays and what powers they have, so it is very important. As I mentioned prior, there is something special about our blood. It is like the Queen's. We can use any blood type, we can restore missiles and blood bead fonts, 
and we can interact with the vestiges and absorb their power. This is why crews, whoever they are, asks us to save the world. When we reawaken into the world, we cannot remember anything. And once again, the font of knowledge the sophisticated revenant tells us more about this memory loss. Each time we die, we lose some part of our memory, be it big or small. It's usually nothing important, and you don't even notice you've forgotten. Well, your case is a little rare, I guess. So in a way, this is like hollowing from Dark Souls. As we die, we lose a little something of ourselves, moving closer and closer to the lost. Our last death seems to be significant for some reason, as it has wiped our memories completely, this being very unusual for a revenant. Revenants usually don't notice they have lost anything because the loss of memory is so small. We are accompanied by a white-haired girl who later reveals her name to be Io. She too has forgotten much of the past, after her last death, yet she tells us what she knows and that she is meant to be by our side. Does this possibly suggest a preordained reason for her joining us? Perhaps Cruz is responsible for her presence. Either way, she seems to remember our power, if anything else, as she is the one who uses our blood to replenish the first blood font that we come across, and it is she who encourages us to overcome the vestige, because she knows we are special. This is a revenant society, but it is filled by dangerous lost, especially in the deep parts of the jail that we can visit later on in the test. So these lost are essentially those revenants, as mentioned, who have fallen to their bloodlust instincts, becoming the zombies that were described in the BOR lore that I mentioned earlier. Indeed, we can see the monstrous lost feasting on each other in the depths, giving in to cannibalism. Giving in to this bloodlust seems to have given other lost increased powers and attributes, they become known as Greater Lost. The Bladebearer is a Greater Lost, for example, and on her fall, her powers seem to have been turned up to 11. She has powers over fire and ice. As the sophisticated Revenant says, it is ironic that Revenant society created by humans and then supplanted them are in turn in danger of being supplanted by their lost brethren. Who is Io and who is Cruz? And how are we meant to save the world from the lost and other dangers? These are questions I very much cannot wait to see answered in the full game, but for now we have already got a good understanding of the world of the Jail of Mists and the main players and some of the history. So I hope you like this video guys, uh, I was just really excited to talk about the lore after playing this game because I think it's going to be a great game and the story is really intriguing already. If you'd like to see more Code Vein uh, content, more lore content specifically when the game comes out, please give me a like and a subscribe as I will definitely be covering the game when it comes out. But for now, let's all just look forward to the real game coming out. Thanks for your time guys, and have a good night.